All right. So I think it's pretty common knowledge that Twitter is a cesspool and holds some of the most sensitive and at the same time offensive people on the internet. And the victim of this sensitivity this time was Lil Nas X. And more specifically, Lil Nas X's new music video for his song, Call Me By Your Name. Uh, if you guys haven't heard the song, uh, you should check it out. And uh, no matter how you feel about it, at least it'll give you some context for this video. But anyways, now his video is very provocative intentionally so of course and it's mostly because well if you guys didn't know i don't unless you don't know Lil Nas X i'm sure you know this but Lil Nas X is gay and he's had to unfortunately hide his sexuality for most of his life and he's been you know he's, he's been shunned also for his sexuality like he's been told to suppress it all the typical shit that comes with like you know being in the closet all that shit right and well he with this video he just said fuck it he already came out of the closet a few years ago i think or maybe a year ago i think i don't i don't remember exactly when but he had already come out of the closet but with this video he just went all out and said i do not care anymore i am who i am and fuck y'all if you don't like it and i think that's great but unfortunately not everyone thinks that a lot of people on twitter have been going at him for this video and when i mean a lot of people i mean celebrities non-celebrities just a lot of people have been going at him and he's been he's been going back at them which is why i'm making this video because comebacks are pretty funny and i just want to showcase some of them for you we can all have a laugh together at people who are closed-minded because really no matter how you think about it how does one man's sexuality really affect you that much it doesn't if you're lazy and you still haven't seen the video uh basically in the video he just goes to hell and gives the devil a lap dance which is kind of like the highlight of the video not the whole video but it's a highlight and it's what most people have a problem with is the fact that he gave satan a lap dance and uh, a lot of people don't like that such as this person right here which said basically he is writing the devil explain how this visualization is supposed to be interpreted by the youth ah yes the youth this is going to be a recur a reoccurring theme through all these comments should all men dress androgynously and sleep with sa satin i'm i'd rather like satin i think it's pretty comfortable you're writing Satan in your new music video. You're proud of that? Yes. Clearly, you can see he doesn't really give a shit. And I mean, he obviously doesn't give a shit because he made the whole video. I'm sure he expected this kind of backlash. I'm sure he almost hoped for this kind of backlash. He clearly made this with the intention of just being himself, being provocative, being kind of going against the people that have been telling him to suppress his sexuality his whole life. And uh, clearly it's working because a lot of people have come out of the woodworks and shared their discomfort with what they saw as if it's his fault. And let's just go back to the youth thing for a second. One of the big problems, other than just the fact that it's representing Satan, whatever, is the whole like youth thing. Because obviously Old Town Roan was a huge hit with pretty much everyone, but also a lot of kids. A lot of kids loved that song. And a lot of people have problems with the new video because what is this showing to the kids? What kind of message are you giving them? Well, such a person said the system is targeting kids. Lil Nas X's fan base is mostly children. They did the same thing with Miley Cyrus after Hannah Montana. We are not going to get into the Miley Cyrus, Hannah Montana thing because I don't know what she's talking about. Uh, but Lil Nas X just says there was no system involved. I made a decision to create a music video. I'm an adult. I'm not going to spend my entire career trying to cater to your children. That is your job. And I think that last sentence is the key to this entire like problem that's going on right now. It is not his job to kind of suppress himself or be careful what he puts out there for your kids. You have to take care of your kids. That is, that is not his job. That are, those aren't his kids. They're your kids. If you don't want them to see that, just don't let them see that. And you can't tell me like, oh, but they're just on YouTube. There's YouTube for kids. There's literally an app called YouTube for kids, which will hide any video of that sort. So you really have no excuse. Uh, another rapper, actually, although I don't know if I really call uh, Lil Nas a rapper at this point, but Jonah Lucas uh, said, I think the biggest problem for me is the fact that he doesn't understand Old Town Road is every kid's anthem. Children love him for that record. They tuned in and subscribed to his channel, so with no disclaimers, he just dropped some left field shit and all our kids seen it. Okay, I to this, I could say the same thing that I said to the last one. It's not his job to take care of your kids. I know a lot of y'all have seen that video of Cardi B playing WAP, and then when a kid comes next to her, she turns that off because it's her job to take care of her kid. She doesn't want her kid to listen to WAP, so when her kid's around, she turns it off. When your kids are around, Turn off Call Me By Your Name. That's all. With the proper restrictions in place, your kids shouldn't be able to watch Call Me By Your Name or shouldn't be able to watch the Call Me By Your Name video. So how is that his fault and not yours? But anyways, 
The problem I have with this post is he said that Old Town Road is every kid's anthem. Children love him for that record. Do y'all know what Lil Nas says in that record? Let me read you verse 2 of Little Nazarius X's Old Town Road. Riding on a tractor, lean all in my bladder, cheated on my baby, you can go and ask her, my life is a movie, bull riding in boobies. What is kid friendly about that? Or, or it didn't matter because he was just making a music video, riding some horses, so it didn't really matter what he said, what he was saying. Because it's actually funny, he said some wild shit in Call Me By Your Name too, but no one's coming at him for it. If you don't care about what's in the song, because both in Old Town Road and Call Me By Your Name, Lil Nas says some wild shit. So if you don't care about the song, just listen to Call Me By Your Name without the visual, that's all. If that's all you care about, then just do that. And he says it here, I literally sing about lean and adultery in Old Town Road. You, decide to, you decided to let your children listen. Blame yourself. Could not say it better myself, even if I tried. Another thing that happened also is in a way to commemorate the music video, uh, Lil Nas collabed with, I think it's this brand called Saint. The company is actually called MSCHF. Saint is the Twitter account that reported on it and that's why I got it mixed up. Which they basically like mod shoes. They basically just modify shoes and they were gonna make 666 pairs of these kind of satanic, uh, satanic Air Maxes that they modified. And um, it, it's a pretty wild shoe, if I'm gonna be honest with you. Like in the sole there, you can see the, the red ink. There's actually one drop of blood in every pair of the 666. So a pretty wild shoe, right? And they have like the pentagram obviously hanging off of the front. Uh, it's a pretty crazy shoe, but a lot of people also have had problems with this shoe. Such a person is Nick Young. My kids will never play Old Town Road again. We already went over that, so I'm not gonna go over that again. I'm still debating about wearing Nike after this. Come on, Nike, a drop of blood for real. But it's not actually Nike though. It's not actually Nike manufacturing the shoe. So why would you come at Nike without informing yourself? That's my problem. Nike has also denied any uh, involvement with the production of the shoe. But I'm not actually sure if they said that at the time that the shoe was revealed or when Nick Young made this tweet. So I'm going to reserve a uh, judgment. Someone who had a problem more specifically with the shoe is uh, Governor Christy Nguyen. Now, I don't know who this is because uh, I mean, it's not really my area. So obviously, I don't know who this is, but this is a governor of some sort. And she said, our kids are being told that this kind of product is not only okay, it's exclusive. Yes, because there's 666 pairs. But do you know what's more exclusive? They're God-given eternal soul. We are in a fight for the soul of our nation. We need to fight hard and we need to fight smart. We have to win. But this Lil Nas X said, you're a whole governor and you're on here tweeting about some damn shoes. Do your job. And I agree. I agree. A lot of these people are on here tweeting about some shit. It really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, especially when they got some other shit they should be doing instead of tweeting about some damn shoes. To this, she answered with an excerpt from Matthew 16, 26. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Little Nazarius Exus answered with his own excerpt from Montero 108. Shoot a child in your mouth while I'm riding. Honestly, a modern day poet. Candace Owens, another conservative uh, person who loves to tweet about nothing, said, We've turned George Floyd, a criminal drug addict, into an icon. I will not even get into that because that's a whole other topic. But just know I am not on her side. We are promoting Satan's shoes to wear on our feet. We've got Cardi B named as Woman of the Year. That is... St like Cardi B caught astray on that one. She was not even in this conversation. But we're convinced it's white supremacy that's keeping black America behind. How stupid can we be? She said so many things in this tweet, and yet she said nothing. And Lil Nas X said, you know you did something right when she talks about it. I guess so, even though she didn't really say anything about it. She's just kind of blabbing about nothing. Uh, another person, another conservative who came for Lil Nas is Nick Adams. He said, clowns like Lil Nas and I am Cardi B. God damn, they're really coming for Cardi B. Couldn't last 30 seconds on a debate stage with the likes of real Candace Owens. Uh, I would have to agree because that's not their area of expertise. Just like they couldn't debate for 30 seconds, Nick Adams, you couldn't make a record like any of these two artists. You couldn't make a record that would go triple cardboard. It's just like if I ask you to cook against Gordon Ramsay. It doesn't make sense. There, there's no correlation here. And a very appropriate response from Mel Nas is you can't last 30 seconds in bed with your wife. And he's probably right. Now, the last tweet, I had to save this one for last because there, there's no way I couldn't save this one for last. Uh, if you guys all know who Caitlyn Bennett is, 
she is another conservative uh, person, but she's a little more aggressive, I feel, than uh, these other conservative people that I've shown you in this video. And she said, it's weeks like these that I'm thankful to be blocked by little Nas X. He says, I still see your tweets, shitty pants. I'm not gonna show you what he's talking about, but there's a fit, there's a photo of allegedly Caitlyn Bennett shitted on herself at a party somewhere. I don't know if it's actually her, but that shit's been flowing around for so long and it still hasn't been debunked and it kind of looks like her. So I don't know, maybe it is her. Uh, and then she says, do you still see your dad? A casual racism thrown into the conversation, you know, just to spice it up a little bit. And Lil Nas X perfectly wraps this up by saying, yep, and I might fuck yours. Moral of the story is, don't let Lil Nas X anywhere near your dad.